If you clicked on this video, you're probably thinking, oh, I want to become a software engineer, but I don't really know how to start. I'm a software engineering manager that has mentored people in various stages of their lives, from high school seniors to interns to new grads to senior engineers. And today I want to give you a useful list of action items that you can do in your spare time to actually become an engineer. So let's get started. Now, Let's start with my background. The way I learned coding was probably the most simple way possible. I literally just went to a local library in my hometown in Germany and I decided I wanted to learn how to build a website. So I found a book, probably the only book in that library, that teaches you how to build a website. That was in 2006, so you can imagine how basic the book was and also how basic web development was at the time. So I took that book home and I created my first website. Back then, I had no support. I didn't even tell my parents. I didn't tell my friends. I didn't know what I was doing. I had nobody to review my code, nobody to even ask questions to. But I still figured it out somehow. I didn't know it back then, but with the method that I used, I actually hit all the core principles of learning that our brain needs to process information better. First, you need some basic information. For me, that was the book. It taught me about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which are the basic languages that you need to build a website. What this means in 2023 is understanding what you wanna do with your coding skills eventually. In case you're completely new to software engineering, every use case has a different language or framework that will support you and your engineering process the best. I'll give you an example. Think about clothing. You have various items in your closet that are made for different occasions. You have loungewear for a comfortable time at home, you have sweaters for warm weather, or you have gym wear to do sports. Now, can you wear a cashmere sweater for your gym session? Sure, but it's probably not ideal and it won't support you and probably actually affect your performance because you'll be sweating a lot. And it's the same with programming languages. You can use languages for almost all use cases, but it's probably not a good idea and it will slow you down in the process. So based on what your goal is, you will probably start differently than other people. And that's okay. Speaking of a goal, back in 2006, my goal was to build a super simple website. I started with just creating an intro page that had my name and I had a photo. Then I added some more text with some of the words being bold or underlined. After that, I focused on building a navigation. So I added a menu bar, the thing that you see on top. And I wanted to make this a little bit more fun because I was 13. <laughs> so I added animation to this menu bar. So when you clicked on it, there were like stars that were falling off. <laughs> what did I do there? I split up my big goal of, I wanna create this website to multiple small pieces and I tracked my learning based on that. And each day I started adding more to it until I had it where I was happy with it. What this means for you is you need to find a passion project that you like and that you wanna work on with your new coding skills. Pick a project that you don't expect to share with your friends, but solves a tiny problem in your life. Typically having a concrete project like this will actually help you to stay at it versus just completing a random coding bootcamp or a coding class that you see online because there is no personality to it. With every milestone that you reach with your project, you'll actually feel more empowered and you learn a tiny piece of new information every day, which helps you to become a better software engineer. But what is actually the best way to get started nowadays? Everyone has a different opinion, obviously. Everyone learns differently. But in my view, I think books are still the way to go. In my time as a software engineer, I learned way over 10 languages and I've read plenty of books. I also took a ton of online courses and I even studied computer science. So I had some very, very in-depth classes about things that I never used in my life. And the problem that I had with those classes was actually that my brain at least works in a practical way. I hate memorizing things. I'm not good at it. And I forget it if I can't try it out right away. By using a book that not only teaches you the concepts, the theoretical concepts, but also 
gives you exercises so you can practice your newly learned information right away, makes it much easier and your brain remembers it much quicker. So you read a few pages, you practice it and you apply it right away. This is much better than listening to some random person for an hour and you probably don't even put your full attention to it. If you are a complete beginner, you have never coded before, you know nothing, you have no idea what object-oriented programming means, for example, I would highly recommend you to check out a book of the Head First series that O'Reilly publishes. For example, Head First Python. Those books go very deep into coding at the end of the book, but start incredibly mellow. So. When they start, you actually feel like you're making progress really quickly and you're learning really fast. Let's say you buy the book. Let's say you start reading it and you have your coding setup ready to go. What's next? Well, first you need to code every single day. And I mean it. You will not learn coding if you wishy-washy look at the book once a week and then you forget everything that you learned the week before. No, I challenge you to dedicate the next 21 days for a minimum of 30 minutes to learning. It doesn't have to be that you write a crazy new software. As long as you open your coding editor and your project every single day, you will learn something. Because even if you didn't understand it the day before, you may get it today after sleeping over it. Your brain needs a bit of time to actually form the patterns and the connections it might be a tough process initially because coding is not an easy skill to learn, but eventually it will just click and then you get it. So let's go back to 13 year old Maria who has successfully created her first website. What did I do next? I think this was in 2009. I wanted to create an app for myself. And back then we didn't have the smartphones that we have right now. So I had a Windows phone, so I wrote a vocabulary trainer as a Windows app where you would import an Excel file with translations and it would go through the list of words and ask me to repeat the words. But through that experience, I gained some more skills because again, I had a problem to solve for myself. So when you have read your first book or you've taken your first intro class, the key now is to advance your skills with personal projects. I'd like to give you some super simple examples. You can build a to-do list app. You can build a web app that sends out a tweet. <laughs> you can even build a tool that uses the ChatGPT API, which is actually not that hard. Another thing that you need to do after you've finished your basic intro to coding is start networking with people. Start talking to real engineers, get your code reviewed and make sure that you have a small network of people that you can count on. Nowadays, there's countless of opportunities either online or in person. The first thing I would recommend for you to check out are hackathons. I think I went to more than 20 hackathons in my life, even winning huge prizes because hackathons are the best opportunity for you to meet fellow engineers in your area, most likely, in the industry and you learn from them. It'll not only allow you to gain a new skill here and there, but also get your code reviewed for the first time. And as we know, we humans, we learn with feedback. So when you receive feedback from someone else, you can actually uplevel your skills. I've worked with brand new engineers on hackathon projects before, but their experience has always been very powerful for them. Especially if you're looking for a job down the line, you could even mention those hackathon projects on your resume. Another way to find engineers in the industry are open source projects. Open source means that there are projects out there where you can read all the source code and even contribute to it. In case you're completely new to this, the platform that we use the most here is GitHub. I think it's the biggest platform in the world even. And you can find literally anything there. Do you know a framework that you used before? Maybe you can connect with those engineers and contribute to it. When I was in college, for example, I started creating React Native apps. And eventually I started engaging with the React Native community more and more and fixed some bugs in the source code, which actually made me much stronger as an engineer. But I was also able to get a lot of feedback from those engineers because those were the experts and they unlocked me much faster. The last way to dive deeper into coding is a bit of passive work, actually. There's a ton of tech meetups and conferences out there. You never know who you'll meet there or what kind of technology will get introduced to you. Even if you're not an engineer right now, you can start getting accustomed to the tech culture, see how people talk or what people get excited about. And there's a saying, if 
everyone around you is an apple, you may be an apple yourself. So be the apple and connect with some of your peers. Last but not least, enjoy the learning process. Coding is a profession where you will never stop learning. There will always be a new framework, there will always be a new language for you to learn just to make something more performant or better. So be comfortable with being uncomfortable. There is not a single engineer out there that's perfect. Everyone has bugs in their software eventually, but we all get better. As someone who's been in the tech industry for more than 15 years now, I can tell you it's so worth it. I do not regret it a single day. I'm still living my dream, to be honest. I learned coding because I love creating things and coding just enables you to create anything in any area of your life. You can help so many people with code and I get so excited when I see more people that actually want to learn how to become an engineer and pick up the skills. So if you ever need motivation, please comment on my videos and tell me. The reason why I'm spending so much time creating the content here on YouTube is it brings me joy to inspire and help people. Tell me what projects you'd like to work on and I might even give you some tips on what to do and what not to do. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.